So what the bank has been thinking of now is innovative ways of financing infrastructure that can transform the continent. Um, so the bank has started looking at what we call the Africa 50 Fund, and 50 for independence. <laughs> but the idea is to, to raise um, uh, eventually $10 billion through equity and investments. Uh, equity from the bank, from the members, member countries, and the investment from uh, you know private sector, government, etc. Um, some of this could be pension funds. Some of it could be central bank reserves and stuff. But we figure that with with 10, 10 billion, one can leverage another maybe um, one to ten ratio. So we can then be able to to reach um, hundred billion worth of investments. This is what we've been doing with our private sector financing, our own financing. So when you look at the last fifty years, for example, just to give you a very concrete example, um, Grand Inga, which we all know has great potential, potentially over forty thousand megawatts of power, that can power most of sub-Saharan Africa. But it 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 was not done because the financing model that we were using was based on um, uh, grants um, and also based on um, uh, government fiscal accounts, you know, neither of which will never be sufficient to finance infrastructure in Africa. For example, an infrastructure bond would be one instrument um, that we can use where we issue the bond and then uh, investors get a return on the bond. But meanwhile, the, bond is the receipts from the bonds is financing the road projects or the power projects. But, um, our board approved a new 10-year strategy um, uh, for, for the continent. Um, of course, the drivers are obvious, demographics, uh, natural resources, and um, uh, um, a higher level of urbanization, as it were. So we, we, are now we continue to focus on the strategy in infrastructure, regional integration, private sector, governance and accountability, and of course skills and, and employment. Um, and uh, what we try to do with that is to meet two objectives. Uh, one that is greener growth, but also more broad base that can trickle down to, to the rest of the population. Now, in terms of the investments and what we're seeing about uh, what investors are doing, I think um, clearly the commodity cycle has been, has been super cycle has been one, um, one advantage for the continent. But we also saw better governance over this period, the last 10 years. Um, we still have a long way to go um, in that space, but, but it's, it's, a positive, it's, it's, it's a positive direction. And what we also see happening is a lot of surpluses accumulating in emerging markets, for example. Those surpluses are, are looking for yields. Those surplus funds are not getting the yields that they used to get in the US or in Europe because of the fact that bond yields are now uh, very low, inflation is quite high. So in real terms, they're not making any, any positive returns on, on, on their thing. So I think there's a lot of optimism. There's a lot of um, realization that Africa is the next frontier, uh, both given the natural resource endowment, but also given the, the enhanced skill mix that is taking place. Uh, I think there's work to be done in the governance space. There's work to be done in terms of um, realizing the potential of regional infrastructure and the national ones that sort of feed into that as well. What we do at, at the bank, we always start with the, with the, with the national, project, national uh, strategies and the regional strategies, um, both from a continental, the RECs, and then the countries. So we have two kinds of strategy papers that guide our interventions. One is the regional integration strategy paper, and the other one is the country strategy papers. So for each country, we have a strategy paper, and, and these are supposed to, to fully align. So for example, if you're talking about the PIDA projects, then that should be aligned with the SADC infrastructure master plan, and all of that should be aligned to the individual country strategies. I think, I think it's important. I think this is the first time since the master plan was rolled out uh, that, that they, they bring such a diverse group together to at least start thinking about how to operationalize it. So I think it is quite important. Uh, it's important from the point of view of um, ourselves, um, other development partners, um, uh, DFID, uh, Trademark, um, uh, EIB, you know, all of this uh, World Bank, they, they're all here and then understanding how SADC uh, and the membership of SADC wants to interact and interface with us, both from a uh, capacity building viewpoint, investment viewpoint, um, and, and actually in terms of just knowledge and advisory services. Yeah, no, the one thing that struck me this morning was the, um, the need for better preparation of projects. 
um, because that's the starting point. Once uh, to attract private sector and the quantum of monies that we're talking about, you must have projects that are absolutely bankable uh, to be able to move forward.